Hey everyone, Glitch here and welcome back to Hack 5 and Montana, apparently. It's beautiful, isn't it? Did you know their primary export is actually really angular rocks? Hey everyone, if you've been following me on Instagram and Twitter, you'll have seen that I've been on quite the road trip this week. I've been working on building out this van as a sort of mobile office, studio, lab thing that I can just do all of my projects and work on the road and get away from the hustle and bustle and chaos that is inner city life right now. It's been really fun and eye-opening thus far, but to do this kind of thing, you need some way to power stuff. And when you're talking things like 3D printers, multi-monitor setups, soldering irons, phones, laptops, and all of that jazz, just running off your vehicle battery isn't going to last very long. And while there are off-the-shelf solutions, they either are expensive or not quite suitable for what we're trying to do here. So that brings us to what we're talking about today, which is a cost-effective battery bank that can be charged in a multitude of ways so that you can continue to power your devices and live your life on the road. Now, this battery bank can be charged in multiple ways, and that was critical because sometimes you might not have solar power, sometimes you might not have access to a power outlet, sometimes you might not be driving very often and you still need to charge your battery bank. So I wanted to be able to do basically opportunistic charging so that anytime you have a certain type of power available, you can make use of that. The other critical detail to a project like this isn't just the charging, it's the storage of the energy, what you are charging. Batteries are expensive. To get one kilowatt hour of battery capacity costs hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Now there's this magic number that electric vehicle manufacturers are working towards, that's $100 per kilowatt hour. I believe Tesla and some others have actually hit this price point in certain ways. The Goal is obviously to get the most energy density for the least amount of money possible while also being safe, reliable, and practical. Consumer devices haven't really been able to match this price point and effectiveness, so for our project, we're going to have to come up with something that is easily accessible. So I don't want to be making our own battery packs. I've done that before, but it's not necessarily safe for the average person to do. I don't want to use anything that is going to be heavy, so I don't want to use lead acid batteries. I want something that's going to last. So that brings us back to lithium batteries. Something that uses 18650 cells would be relatively safe. It's the reason Tesla uses those cells in their battery packs. So what are our options? Well, like I said, we could put our own packs together using 18650 cells. I've done that before using soldering, which you shouldn't do, spot welding, which requires specialized and expensive equipment. Alternatively, we could use packs that are already built but then you're going to be paying that premium because, well, everyone else wants to use those packs. Now, specifically, we're looking for something that will power 12-volt appliances. So normally, that would mean that we're going to need a 12-volt battery. Well, 12-volt batteries are in high demand, especially right now when everyone's doing van life, camping, and whatnot, and they want to get away from the city, like we're trying to do. And so these are hard to find right now. What aren't hard to find are hoverboard batteries. Yeah, the ones that like to catch fire, but that was the charging circuit causing that, not the management circuit or the cells themselves. So you can go on eBay and find these hoverboard batteries for $30 to $40, and you get four of them, or however many you want. This is an infinitely expandable system. And for about $120 to $130, you're talking 650 watt hours, or 0.65 kilowatt hours of energy. We're not quite matching that $100 per kilowatt hour price point Tesla's able to do, but it is still a lot of power that really can't be matched by using things like USB battery banks. This is 100 watt hours, so a tenth of a kilowatt hour, and costs something like $120. So while you could run a lot of your appliances with that, especially with USB converters like we did back in my 3D printing video, it's just not as practical or cost effective as what we're doing today. So what are we doing today? Well, we are building this monstrosity. As you can see, it is a rugged case with some ports on the side and a power switch and some interesting electronics inside. So let's dig into that. Now inside this case here, we have four hoverboard batteries. These are 36 volts at 4.4 amp hours. Now we have these all wired in parallel so that we're getting something like 16 point, or no, 17 point, almost 18 amp hours, let's just call it that, of, at 36 volts of lithium power. 
Now, like I said, these packs all combined cost about $125, which is not a bad price per, you know, kilowatt hour. Now, these packs are wired in parallel, which goes into a buck converter. This buck converter gives us a good 12 to 12 and a half volts output to run all manner of things. There is also a charge controller connected, and this is specifically a boost type solar charge controller. However, you can also, because it's a boost type controller, input several other types of charging. All of this is then wired to a number of power plugs. I have 3D printed some custom holders to hold eight, uh, XT60 connectors in a nice convenient form factor so that you can just have whatever you want plugged in very easily. Now, all of these male plugs are for outputs. This female plug is for the input. There we can plug in a power brick so that we can charge from a wall uh, wall plug if we have one ex accessible to us. We can plug in a 12 volt cable from the car outlet and that will boost the power up and charge our batteries. We can also plug in solar panels up to, I think it's like 30 volts roughly. So two panels in series is a good one. And then we have our main power switch, which shuts everything off or turns it on. And that's really all there is to it. Now, I need to mount this cooling fan properly because it does get a bit toasty in here. Other than that, it is not that complex of a device. And we have over half a kilowatt hour of energy. So that's five or six to seven USB battery banks all connected in one easily usable device. We can put up to 300 watts of solar into this and you know, be charging laptops and running other devices at the same time and still do better than breaking even on energy. So this is a very capable little package that I'm pretty happy with. Now, what exactly can you run with this? Well, you can use a 12 volt to USB-C charger to charge laptops. This just plugs into a harness that is a 12 volt outlet connected to an XT60 connector. You can run roof fans to keep cool if you've got those in your van. If you can plug it into a car, it uses a DC power brick. You can run it on this with just a little bit of hacking. And that just about does it for this project. Now, this battery bank isn't done. Like I said, I need to mount the cooling fan and I've got a couple other ideas. But what would you like to see in this battery bank? If I do a revisit, what would you like to see changed, added? Are there any questions you have? Please leave a comment down below. In the description, I will have links to all of the parts I used for this system. This whole thing could be built for under $300. And when you compare the energy density to something like a Jackery or a Blue Yeti device, it just, it doesn't compare. It is half the price for double the energy. And you're also not limited to just a 10 amp uh, carport output. You can run hundreds of watts of devices simultaneously on this one device. I think that about does it for today. I've been Glitch. This has been Hack 5. Glitch out. Now I'm going to get back to that river. Thanks for supporting Hack 5. Find all our shows, community, and Pentest products at hack5.org.